Well, after a week 11 that saw some things happen, you know, the end of the whole we want Vandy to be ranked thing, you know, South Carolina is indeed ranked in the top 25 of the college football playoff rankings this week. They are number 21. Tulane has also entered number 25. Um, Unfortunately for Army, you know, they're just going to be stuck in the low 20s for quite some time, which is rather unfortunate for a team like Army because, again, they beat my UNT mean green 14-3 this week. Again, tough matchups with some teams. You know, the, there are four unbeatens left. You know, Indiana is another one of them. They were able to take they were able to take care of business on defense. You know, couldn't get it done on offense, but hey, that's what the defense is for. They were able to stop Michigan from scoring because again, you know, with Mullings and Donovan Edwards in the backfield, you know, Michigan's trying to run the ball on the Hoos. And that was not happening. BYU had to survive Utah, you know, crazy game in which you know, Brent Queeth and, and 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 all the other cats. You know, you know, for Utah because again, you know, they got they got some good they got some good receivers. I'll tell you that much. Utah does they have some really good receivers. And BYU, yeah, there was some ref ball. I know, I know, but who cares? The game's over now. BYU is still unbeaten, number six in the country. Indiana, number five in the country. You know, it's crazy. It's really, really crazy how things change, you know. You know, you never expected a team like BYU to be where they are right now at number five in the country. Indiana, or rather, number six. Indiana at number five. You never expected that. Yeah, I get it. Some teams like Penn State don't really have a resume, or Texas doesn't have a resume, you know, because, again, the SEC's been beating up on each other. The Big Ten is just a bunch of mid, you know, so I mean, it's just like, there's nothing really to say, you know, about those two teams that can't be said already. They just kept taking, they, they, them two kept taking care of business, like, you know, Tennessee took care of business too against Mississippi State, you know, again, most of the SEC has been, you know, the schedule for some of these SEC teams have, you know, worked out in their favor, you know, Alabama, Basically punted LSU out of the CFP race with Jalen Milrow having a, a beautiful stat line on the ground. Over nearly 200 yards rushing by himself, barely 100 passing. He ran all over the LSU Tigers, and so did Jam Miller. And, and, and I mean, my goodness, this this Alabama team when they can when they are on firing on all cylinders, they are firing on all cylinders. You know. Garrett Nussmeyer and Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly just absolutely livid, you know, pretty much the entire time. And, I mean, LSU now has three losses on the season, brothers. That will kill your playoff hopes. And, you know, they're ranked right behind South Carolina now. So, so yeah, LSU's playoff hopes are done, which really kind of tells me, you know, three loss teams are not getting in this thing. You know, we might have one, but that's a very, very small possibility at this moment in time. You know, and again, there's still football left to be played. We still have three weeks left in the regular season, plus the conference championships. You know, um, Miami finally lost the game to Georgia Tech. They could not stop the run either. You know, with Haynes King and, 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 and Haynes, the running back on the ground, you know, and, I mean, Georgia Tech was hobbling because both of those guys got hurt. So, you know, you know, Georgia Tech had to use their backup Philo, you know, and stuff like that. I think that was his name. I cannot remember names to save my life <laughs> at times. But, yeah, um, Georgia Tech, you know, ran all over the field on Miami. Miami couldn't really, you know, do anything on offense. Cam Ward looked kind of like how he has been for most of the season, you know. Making the big plays when he can, but then there's the little things that just don't seem to work. Like again, he was off target for a good chunk of that game. You know, yeah, had a stat line at one point of where he completed like one out of his last eight passes. It was rough, 
And then the defense has not helped at all. You know, it's just been, it's been like this all season. Miami's defense has been very, very bad the entire season, and it did not change in this game. You know, again, when you allow, you know, like over 200 yards rushing, you know, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a bad time. I'll tell you another team who had a bad time, the Georgia Bulldogs. Um, Yeah. You know, again, Trey Harris has been out. You know, there was some other injuries to Ole Miss as well. Jackson Dart didn't even pass the 200 yards. But yet that Ole Miss defense was able to finally put Georgia to sleep for a little while. You know, they just punted Georgia in the mouth. The game looked – the score looks a lot worse than it actually is, you know, or rather it looks a lot better than it actually was. Cause again, Georgia, you know, Carson Beck, the offense relying on him to pass the ball a lot when, you know, there could be more of a balance, you know, Kirby smart and company haven't realized this yet, but you got to kind of have a little bit more balance to it. And they have not done that. And thus Beck has been picked off so many times over the past four or five games, it's not even funny. It's been rough watching this man play. You know, and Ole Miss was able to exploit it to the point where Georgia loses their second game of the season. Again, this is not the same Georgia team as last year or the year before that or anything like that. This is a Georgia team that's very vulnerable on offense, you know, because, again, the wide receivers just don't really strike fear into anybody's hearts like Brock Bowers did last year or some of these other guys beforehand. They just don't. They just don't at all. And I mean that's just the that's just the reality of the situation, you know. Teams like Oregon, you know, they have Tez Johnson, you know, none of the guys, you know, Ferguson, you know, they 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 have those guys, you know, George James on the offensive, you know, side of the ball. And I mean Oregon continues to win. You know, unbeaten Oregon now, you know. But I know a team that's going to, you know, the other team that's, you know, top two, you know, and they're not number one, they're number two, that's the Ohio State Buckeyes. Now, look, you know, Oklahoma fans were crying about, you know, oh, well, we have to play our games at noon. But, again, your games were being split. And, And here's the thing, you know, here's the thing about it. I don't think people... Do people still not understand media contracts? Do people still not understand the way the Big Ten has been doing things for years? Do people still not understand some of this stuff? I think I think there's just, you know, do, do people not understand how these TV deals work and how, you know, some of these conferences have been over the years? It's November. When have you seen a Big Ten game in middle of November or even, you know, not even that late into November, you know, November the 9th ain't too bad, but like, do you ever see a game on November 23rd, you know, now, you know, now with NBC getting into the fold, yeah, you can see that now, but, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, did you see a game in the Big Ten where it's like, oh, well, this is a big time game and we're going to put it at night and we're going to put it on ABC now. No, no, those games are always either like 3.30 or noon. But again, the, the the problem with that is, and there's another factor into this too that I'll talk about in a second. Um, the first problem is that, you know, I, I don't think people understand, you know, Fox, for the most part, this year is getting the, the, the Ohio State and the Michigans and the Penn States. They're getting those games at noon. Yeah, there's a team like Colorado that gets a noon game every now and then, or West Virginia, you know, against Penn State, of course, you know, or some other teams, you know, every now and then. It was the same thing with Oklahoma, Texas being in the SEC, you know, or rather not in the SEC, in the Big 12, you know, every now and then, you know, other teams in the Big 12 would, you know, get their chance at Fox's big noon, you know, slate. And yet now, you know, because, you know, Ohio State is like the only team that can pull their weight, you know, because some of these other teams cannot. Yeah, we're going to have Ohio State, you know, like five, six straight games of having noon kickoffs. It is what it is. You know, what can you say that can't be said already? Again, the, the, the game was weird a little last year because, again, the contracts hadn't kicked in yet fully. 
had kicked in for the Big Ten fully, you know. It was CBS's last leg with the SEC. And again, I don't understand why people still do not understand. <laughs> the SEC was not going to renew with CBS at all. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with the NBA and TNT. It's not happening because they don't want that. The NBA didn't want TNT. The SEC didn't want CBS. Why are we still are, why are we still having this conversation in 2024? We're still having this conversation. We shouldn't even be having this conversation in 2024. We should know by now that the SEC said, no, we don't want CBS no more. We're, we're all in with the mouse and ESPN. We're all in with ESPN. That's what they said. But people still ain't using their brains. And it's the same thing with, you know, the Big Ten, you know, getting into bed with CBS, Fox, and NBC, you know, all three together. It is what it is with that. You, you can't really change it. Did CBS and NBC pay a little bit more for basically less? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. But, I mean, NBC was trying to get themselves into the game anyway. They've been trying to get themselves really into college football anyway over the years. So, I mean, they're happy to have college football at all because they get to use Peacock. You know, nobody really likes Peacock. They get to use Peacock and stuff like that. But, um, you know, and CBS is just happy to have a game still, you know, on Saturdays. They don't want to just show, you know, soccer all day or, you know, whatever else they show on a Saturday. But there's not really a lot of options on a Saturday. You know, who's, who's going to be fired up for college basketball in November? You know, like that. Not me. I mean, obviously, I'm not even watching the Champions Classic right now. I'm, I'm recording this. But what I'm trying to tell you is that. You know, things are different. Money talks. And the fact of the matter is, is that this is what you paid for. This is what you're getting. You're getting Peacock. You're getting, you know, big time CBS windows, you know, for basketball and 15 games for football. You're getting those. You're getting those. You're getting NBC. You're getting all those games on Peacock. You're getting all those games on FS1 and Big Fox on Fridays and, you know, Saturdays and stuff like that. You're getting all that. <laughs> They're literally trying to cater to you guys in a way to where, you know, they can make their money and y'all can still play the games. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, the games have to be played. The money has to be made. So I don't get it. I really don't. And then the last thing is that, well, a lot of the Big Ten is bad. You know, yeah, there's been some very intriguing finishes in the SEC, but that's because the SEC is actually beating up on each other and it's actually mattering, you know. Again, like South Carolina going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alabama, you know, beating A&M the way they did, smack them around. A&M, you know, and LSU have a little, have a little clash, you know, to where A&M was able to get by the Tigers – you know, and stuff like that, you know, and of course, you know, Alabama beating LSU or Georgia, you know, beating Texas, but losing the Ole Miss, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. It really is a lot, you know, and Alabama, you know, it's just a lot. Vanderbilt, of course, lose, beating, beating Alabama, Missouri, even though they're terrible, they beat Vanderbilt. Yeah, they lost to A&M, but they beat Vanderbilt, you know, and it's like, Michigan, you know, terrible this year. Why else do you think Indiana is where they are where they are? You know, USC, mid, Nebraska, mid, UCLA, mid, Washington, mid. You know, we only had like one big game, you know, really two in the Big Ten this year so far. And that was Ohio State, Oregon, and Ohio State, Penn State. Ohio State, Oregon was obviously going to be the, you know, NBC game because, again, Fox ain't going to take that game. It's on the West Coast, you know. So, and again, they do a little draft and trade and, you know, do all this divvying up with net, with, between the three networks to get the allotted windows needed, you know, to make it all work. You know, you see how it's going with the ABC deal. You see how it's going with the SEC on ABC. You see how that's going, you know, where you can put three SEC games in there every week on ABC, and boom, it works. 
And it could be, and it should kind of be the same thing with the Big Ten. You know, you put three games in three different windows and it just works, but it ain't been working because the matchups aren't delivering. And that's the biggest thing. The matchups aren't delivering. Iowa, terrible, you know, still in some ways. You know, they can crack 40 points in most games, but when they play somebody, you know, that actually has a pulse, oh no, that ain't happening. Wisconsin, no. Minnesota, eh. Rutgers, now. Nah. Maryland, terrible. Like, like, come on, y'all. You know, the you know the games that actually you know are getting you know a little bit weird. You know, the ACC, the Big Twelve. You know, they're the ones that's getting left in the dust too by all this. Because again, right now, projected, both conferences are going to have are going to only have one bid. You know, a piece. Notre Dame is, you know, obviously in the mix because they only have one loss. And that's really the crux of this whole situation. Yeah, the Big Ten has four to top five, but that's it. You know, because they all they haven't really scheduled those games to be, you know, up against each other. And like the third biggest game on the Big Ten schedule is also going to involve Ohio State against Indiana in a couple weeks. So you know, it is what it is, you know, but yeah, yeah, this week is a bit lighter again because the SEC decided, you know what, let's play, let's have Alabama play Mercer. Yeah, Mercer is not in one in the FCS. Yeah, I don't talk about the FCS no more because it's a mess in a, of its own right, but I mean, we still got something, we still got something. Tennessee, Georgia is the Biggest game of the week by far, and I know people were mad. Another game day is coming there, but I mean, who cares? You know, the whole big noon controversy kind of sucked a lot of the drama out of the week, you know, for me, to be quite honest with you. And I just find it really, really funny. You know, Nico Imaliva, you know, has been, you know, through concussion protocol, but but you have Dylan Sampson in the backfield. He should be able to work that Georgia defense, right? I hope so. I hope so. Um, you know, if Jackson Dart can get knocked out and, you know, come back in and do what he does, you know, you know, against Georgia, then I'm expecting Nico. And that the one loss Tennessee team did the same thing. Tennessee has the most potential to get one more of those big time wins. And if that happens, they should surpass Texas, I think, in the rankings. Um, you know, Texas is taking on Arkansas. Don't take Arkansas pretty lightly because that's who beat Tennessee. You know, it's the only team that beat Tennessee is Arkansas. Um, Pitt lost their second straight game, you know, this past week. So that game against Clemson kind of means a little less, you know, but Clemson's still trying to get themselves in position to go to the ACC championship. Same thing with SMU taking on Boston College. Uh, again, Ohio State stuck in the new window, but it's on the Big Ten Network. Who cares? It's Northwestern. Who cares, bro? Who cares? Tulane, again, they are ranked, but they're taking on Navy this week. So keep in mind, watch out for that game. Should be very fun. Um, Notre Dame, again, all they got to do is take care of business. You know, the last true big test remaining is the Army game in two weeks. You know, USC, I just don't I just don't find them inspiring at all. Virginia, they're okay too. They're okay. Same thing. They're basically like USC. Same thing. They're okay. LSU, no reason to talk about them now. They they're going up against the floor team that just got smacked around by Texas, you know, with the third stringer. Louisville is still ranked for some reason because they're just ranked for some reason. I don't know if they are going to have a path to get to the ACC championship, but it's okay. Penn State, as long as they win, they're in the playoff. Like, they only have one loss. They don't have any big wins. Same thing with Texas. They don't have any big wins at all. And just one loss. Remember, just a single loss. So, no worries. Um, Missouri South Carolina is a game that does involve ranked teams. And again, both these teams are very low on the rankings, so it does not, it really doesn't matter at all. Again, we're kind of focused towards the top half of the SEC right now. You know, Alabama, Ole Miss, you know, AM, Texas, Tennessee, Georgia. We're kind of focused towards that top five, six, seven teams right now. And Missouri is not one of those teams. 
Kansas State, they are still in the rankings too, but they play Arizona State. So watch out for Cam Scadaboo. You know, hopefully he should play this week. He didn't play this past week, but he should play this week, I think. And again, the Ash DeJanty show, you know, is still rolling against Nick Nash at San Jose State. That should be fun. That honestly should be a fun game. You know, Boise State trying to keep that momentum going as they potentially could get UNLV again or maybe Colorado State. It, I don't know. Um, and it was playing New Mexico State. That does not matter. Washington State is ranked number 18, though. They can still crash the party with just one loss. They have one loss. You know, Army has no losses. Washington State has one to Boise State, of course. Boise State dropped a little bit. They dropped like one spot to number 13. But again, Boise State is the top ranked group of five team in the you know, fifth highest conference champion. Remember, the five highest ranked conference champions go to the playoffs. So even at the, so even SEU, who's technically on the outside looking in right now for some reason, because why not? You know, still has a chance. So Washington State, you still have a chance. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. Washington State, all they have to do is take care of business. Take care of business, and they are, you know, getting closer and closer. BYU, same thing. Yeah, it's Kansas, but Kansas beat the brakes off of Iowa State this past week. So you may want to stay weary. Maybe stay a little weary. Maybe stay up for some Big 12 at the dark, eh? I think that's what we're going to do is stay up for some Big 12 after dark, you know. Maybe some Mountain West after dark with New Mexico. We'll see. We'll see how all that goes because, again, this pet, this week is going to be very intriguing, you know, just because it's sort of a cupcake week. There's been a lot of down weeks this year because there hasn't been as many top-tier matchups, it seems, you know, and I know it seems like there hasn't, but there has been. They've just been very, very sporadic, you know, and, you know, just jammed all into, like, one window again, like it's 2011 or something like that. It's going to be a good time, let me tell you. This week is going to be good. Somebody is going to get upset this week. Somebody. I don't know who, but somebody will get upset this week. So, let me get on out y'all's hair and talk to y'all tomorrow.